creating and modifying an approved purchase order so the first step here is to create a purchase order and next step is to go and approve that purchase order and the third step is modifying and approve purchase order so all these three steps have been combined in one lesson so let's go into Oracle Fusion Applications Procurement Cloud and there I'm going to show you this functionality. So here I am in Fusion Cloud Procurement Applications and I've logged in as the buyer, Tiffany Irving. And now I'm going to go into Procurement from here. And within that, I'm going to go and navigate to purchase agreement so one is you can go via the springboard and second is you can go via the navigator so if you look at this on the top here are the different menu items that's been listed you can navigate from here so for procurement you have to go into this uh, procurement sub menu and then directly go on to purchase order for creating a new purchase order so either ways one is menu or that springboard so that will lead you to a purchase order dashboard. So here it will show you the orders that are requiring your attention. For example, failed submission or purchase order with uh, any invoice related holds or purchase orders which has been submitted for approval but that have been rejected by the approval authority. Likewise, if you see any requisition lines that requires your attention, for example, requisitions lying there, um, which are in incomplete status or uh, requisitions which have not been fulfilled as yet. Um, those would be listed over here. Then purchase orders which are under process, for example, pending approval or pending ap acknowledgement or change pending or uh, any change pending acknowledgements. So any of these statuses will be shown over here. Any recent activity uh, such as you submitted a purchase order waiting for an approval or you have created an invoice for a PO but that invoice is waiting for an approval and so on. So something related to purchase orders will be shown over here. Lastly, here you have open schedules for that purchase order. So purchase order created but it is open under approved status it is waiting for receiving or if it is already received whether it is closed for receiving and as you could see 322 are closed for receiving but not yet been invoiced so if it has been invoiced the status would be closed for invoicing but if it is on hold under invoice then it will be shown as on hold all right so those are the functionalities as far as the PO related um, dashboard is concerned so if you wish to create a new PO simply look at your right hand side here you've got the taskbar so within taskbar or task menu you click on this link and here you simply navigate to something called as create order and that will let you create a new purchase order all right and here you see the different styles you've got a purchase order a consignment order, delivery of services, PO, outside processing purchase order, purchase order. So these are like different purchasing document types you can define as a part of your implementation setups. You can give any name as you like, but in vision uh, instance, you've got these names already assigned and set up. But while you're implementing, you can give different names, for example, purchase order standard and then purchase order for goods, purchase order for services like that. You can give different styles and restrict the uh, access to the form fields using the document type while you're defining it. So Oracle provides a form wherein you can define these document type and there you can specify what exactly that style is supposed to do, okay? Anyway, then you choose your procurement business unit and requisitioning business unit. It could be different. Um, it could be same um, depending on who is the requisitioning business unit. Then you can specify a supplier right here. So let's give a supplier. Let's look for a supplier, say something like Midwest or something. Midtown Computer Supplies. Okay. Hit on OK. 
so supplier site the default site is selected automatically you can optionally choose a contact leave it if you doesn't know default ship location sold to legal entity currency and the buyer are listed automatically so this buyer is associated with the present user but you can always change this buyer to any other buyer that you wish as long as you've got the function to change it okay so i'm going to leave it as it is and hit the create button so that will create a purchase order header but it's not going to create all the lines of that purchase order okay You can always change the currency so this is the basic functional currency USD which is set up in this uh, ledger as you could see the purchase order has been created you can always update the details if you like then you can um, give a description to this purchase order so standard purchase order for good something like this okay so the creation date is specified buyer is specified these are all the details coming from that first form now these were not the first there in the first form and you can always update that so these are coming from your purchasing setup like uh, whether this PO requires an acknowledgement from the supplier whether he has received the PO and he accepts the PO like that so there are various options out here acknowledge the document and document and schedule acknowledgement so I'm gonna leave it and then uh, once you choose this then this option would be enabled as well acknowledge within days for example acknowledge within seven days after this PO has been communicated to the supplier then you've got the shipping method here you can specify uh, which shipping you prefer from the supplier for example send it via UPS or um, DHL or any other uh, logistics or third-party uh, shipping provider then freight terms if at all you have negotiated with the supplier and if you know that you can specify that over here but uh, if it, you order it frequently from that supplier and if you know these are the freight terms that the supplier usually um, agrees to then you can specify over here so in this case the buyer pays the freight but um, uh, if you're a regular customer certain times the supplier also pays for the freight okay depends on what terms you have agreed with your supplier then then f free on board or freight on board is basically who owns the responsibility of the goods or services once it has been shipped so um, the responsibility of the supplier ends at the origin then it's the responsibility of the buying organization from there okay then uh, if you come to the lines there are no lines at the moment and then you see you've got additional information like a customer PO uh, and warranty expiration date if you wish to specify over here okay so I'm gonna leave this as it is then comes to the line I'm gonna create a new line so you can either create using this plus button or you can simply go to actions and hit add row button or you can add it from the catalog as well which I'm going to show you in a little while later okay so as you could see a new line has been created you've got the lift different line types goods and services and so on again these line types you can separately define as a part of your implementation setups of purchasing module okay so I'm gonna leave it quotes and in terms of the item I'm gonna choose an item so you can either specify an item number or search by its description in this particular form so let's say something like a laptop if I go ahead and search it hopefully it should come up with some hits so 
can try the different combinations until you find the item that you're looking for look 17 inches vision laptop case so let's say this is just a laptop case a line will be added over here likewise I'm gonna add two three lines over here just for demonstration let's say quantity of one unit of measure is associated with the item definition here it comes automatically then the price if it's not a negotiator price and if you know the price the supplier has agreed then you can specify over here let's say thirty dollar and location by default coming from what we have given in the first screen who is the requester so present case the buyer is the requester but you can always change that to the name of that requester for example you see you can give a name of the request as Roth so Kelvin Roth is the requester hit the OK button alright then I'm gonna add one more line okay and then I'm going to search for an item I don't know whether it accepts percentage wildcard in the first place let's see you see it doesn't accept that and I don't know whether it's gonna give us any search results by just this term last time it didn't so I'm going to change this to say like computer and search it just gave me computer okay so it's a desktop computer and let's say the price is $250 leave the requester as it is so I'm going to add one more line. Let's see if we can search for hard disk. So give quantity one. So I'm going to say internal hard something like this. Let's see whether it retrieves internal hard drive. No, that's not what we want. So if you look at the advanced options, let's see what we have. You can add a field over here if you like. So let's say add field. it's not helping us much if I say something like printer let's see if I simply cancel and if I come over here and say actions and add from catalog so 
so let's say let's remove this line and then actions add from catalog look the different catalogs that's been already defined over here so if I go into office technology and then here I'm gonna look for the hard drive look this one so let's say this one and let's say this one an excellent hard drive and some additional memory this one as well okay so as you could see all those three items have been added over here and then I'm gonna click on complete button so the advantage of defining this catalog is that you see you don't have to remember the names or descriptions of those items okay you see one or more of the selected items are not purchasable in the specified ship to organization these items will not be added to the document so depending on your ship to organization settings at the item level only those items will be added that are eligible so one have been added which is the external hard drive but never mind and the price is automatically set so as I was saying the advantage of this is that you don't have to remember the item number or description of that item you can simply go to the catalog and select from the catalog filter around and it makes things easier for a user okay then I'm gonna save this purchase order you see I'm gonna then save this purchase order number okay once you saved it you can always uh, view the PDF to see the contents of this purchase order you can go to the schedules to see the schedules of these items and the distributions to see the accounts associated with it okay and in the schedule as you could see you can give a requested delivery date and a promise date from the supplier okay so a buyer can request the date the supplier can promise a delivery date now usually this happens over the phone outside the system and the supplier will specify that as a part of um, your phone communication then the buyer will um, list it down as a part of your PO or maybe by email communication if that communication happens those details can be specified over here now in terms of external hard drive let's say I'm gonna give to external hard drive as my requirement so now I'm gonna resave it again and then I'm gonna hit on manage approvals to see who are all my approvals who is it going to be sent for approval so you see there are several people HR specialist Curtis Fetty procurement manager and another serial approval by this so I'm gonna note down these details somewhere and then once I'm ready I'm gonna click on submit button to send this for approval 163985 is our purchase order which is now submitted for approval so we'll also log in as the procurement manager Kelvin Roth you see you must enter either a requested date or a promise date for planned items so it looks like we haven't entered them so you're gonna cancel this part and then go back to the lines and go to schedules 
and here you enter requested delivery date let's say today's date okay I'm gonna save it again I'm gonna go to manage approvals once more and either I can submit from here or I can submit directly from the PO header so the document purchase order 163985 was submitted for approval okay now you see we'll go back to our orders and see where our order is at the moment so I'm gonna go back to manage orders and look for our order by searching using the PO number okay so that was the PO its status is pending approvals okay so presently the PO is being prepared in the background process okay clicking again looks like it's gonna retrieve some details in terms of where it is so as you could see presently the status is it has been assigned to Curtis Fatty who is the HR specialist so we have to log in as Curtis Fatty okay and look for it hers approval so it's a serial approval so first it's gone to HR specialist then you would require the approval of procurement manager and then this user called as HYD HYD okay let's, so let's do that so I have to log out from this user and log in as Curtis Fetty before we proceed further so let me log out and log in as Curtis Fetty first Alright, so I've logged in as HR Specialist Curtis uh, Fetis and this is the dashboard um, that I've got as soon as I've logged in and in order to see a notification for purchase order pending for her approval, you've got to go here right on the top right hand corner and click on this bell icon and here you would see action required approve purchase order approve or reject you can do it right from here or you can review this purchase order by clicking on this notification you see the details of the PO has been given over here okay and who are all the purchase order approval is waiting for so once this gets approved from Curtis Fetty it goes to the procurement manager then it goes to this particular user okay you can view the details of this purchase order via this PDF link provided over here so all I'm gonna do is hit on the approve button but you can always reject it if you like you see um, there are a number of different things you can do it for example you can request information from the buyer you can delegate to some other person you can reassign to some other person um, alternatively you can suspend or withdraw or add comments to this purchase order or you can possibly add comments um, and add attachments to these details okay so all I'm gonna do now is hit the approve button and then hit the approval you can always add some comments so so like approved and hit the submit button alright so this notification will disappear now next time you have a look hmm. so looks like it's still it's coming 
if I say from here I thought I said approved still it is showing you see it's not showing it's just that the notification has not refreshed automatically but I have already approved it so all those uh, options we are seeing most of them have gone so all of all you can do now is you can reassign or suspend or withdraw your approval okay so I'm gonna cancel this and come out then I'm gonna sign out and then I'm gonna log in as the purchasing manager Kelvin Roth so just logged in as the procurement manager Kelvin Roth okay and now I'm gonna review my notification for the purchase order that we created and we got it approved first from the HR specialist so if you look at this purchase order you look at the notification it would clearly say the hierarchy we have seen previously as to who all it has gone for approval and who has submitted or created this purchase order so if you look at down you see it's been submitted by buyer Tiffany Irving it's been approved by HR specialist Curtis Fetty and then it has been assigned to procurement manager Kelvin Roth okay so you either hit approve from here or you close this or you approve right from the notification any way you like okay so this notification is gone from your dashboard so if you log out and log in now as uh, Tiffany Irving you would be able to see the next level of uh, purchasing approval which is gone ahead by another user okay all right so here I'm gonna go and look at my notification so I can't see any new notification so all I have to do now is go to my dashboard and look for the purchase order you see orders in process one so if you click on that hopefully it will retrieve that purchase order the one that we are working with okay this is the one one six three nine eight five and presently it is pending approval okay you see it has been approved by two people and now it is waiting for approval from this particular user so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go login and then I'm gonna get it approved offline and then I'm gonna come back and show you the approved PO alright alright so what I have done in the background was uh, I've resigned the purchase order to Kelvin Roth once again and since Kelvin Roth had already approved it reassigning means that nothing has to be done again so it got automatically reapproved okay so if you go and look at the procurement and you look at the purchase orders you would be able to see what's going on so open schedules So if you click on this one, hopefully it's going to retrieve that information. So three lines are open for receiving and it belongs to this purchase order. You see, can you see that? And there is a warning, we have to see what's going on. So this is overdue schedule, we have created it with uh, today's date. Okay and uh, if you go and look at uh, this purchase order itself you would see the status is open so it has been approved already you can go ahead and search this order once again look and if you click on the status it's gonna show you what's going on 
you see initially Tiffany Irving submitted it then it got approved by Curtis Fetty then it got approved by Kelvin Roth and since I reassigned it to this particular user again it got reapproved once again by Kelvin Roth okay so presently the status is approved and it is showing the status as open means that it is open for receiving so that was the purchase order lifecycle in terms of how you can create and get it approved now I'm going to show you how you can modify a purchase order so what I'm going to do is open this purchase order and then I'm going to click on actions and hit the edit button so before I do that I'm going to tell you what I will modify so here as you could see in the third line for external hard drive I've given the, given the quantity as 2 so instead of 2 quantity I'm going to modify it and change it to quantity 1 okay so that's all I'm going to do so I'm going to go and click on actions edit and you see there is a warning this action will create a change order on the document do you want to continue so I'm gonna hit the yes button I scroll down and update the quantity on the third line from 2 to 1 okay then I'm gonna save my changes you see presently the change order one it is okay version number one and you see change line three for external hard drive from quantity two to one okay something which makes sense you save it you see the, again the status got changed to incomplete so you've got to resubmit once more so if you go and look at the approvals okay it's got to go for approval again you hit the submit button and you see it has been submitted for approval We look at the document history okay let's requery it to see the details okay you see what's this information a change order is pending right and you see the change order number is one you can see the life cycle as to what's going on so nothing in terms of uh, in transit uh, shipments receipts or invoices you click on done and then you look for the change order by clicking on this link and here it's showing you what's changed so the amount changed to minus 30 USD so if you see any notifications no then I'm going to go back to this PO once again you see pending change order is there and status is pending approval so we have got to go and reapprove it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in as Curtis Fetty and see whether a notification has come for a change order hit the done button and then I'm gonna go sign out
all right and then look for any notifications you see the change order has come here and if you look at uh, the notification details it's going to show you the details of the changes made you see change lines this particular line has been changed an amount changed to minus 30 and what's the change account okay then I'm gonna hit the approval button and then it's gonna go to procurement manager the same approval hierarchy so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the approvals in the background and then once it has been fully approved then I'm gonna come back and we'll review the PO changes all right so hold on for a minute so I've logged in as Kelvin Roth and I'm gonna approve it right from here okay so that notification is gone and then if I go back to the purchase order I should be able to see it but again it's waiting for another user HYD HYD approval okay so it has been approved our order but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the navigator navigate to tools and then I'm gonna go to transaction controls basically I'm doing this in order to change the next approver um, I don't want to re-log in once again because it's taking long so I will simply go and change the approver from HYD HYD you see next approval HYD HYD and to Kelvin Roth so it will just cut short a little time so I'm gonna go to actions reassign to Kelvin Roth see this one and hit the reassign button okay so by that what will happen is this PO will be automatically approved you can also view the transaction history if you like okay then I'm gonna go back here to procurement purchase orders and I'm gonna re-query that purchase order so I'm gonna go to manage purchase orders and basically you have to re-query it not by buyer Kelvin Roth but by Tiffany Irving who is the buyer so what you can do is it's not listed here so and then search okay so that was the order we created one six three nine eight five right we click on this one it's gonna show you the details three lines and now the third line we have updated the quantity from two to one okay and you can look at the order life cycle so nothing in terms of in transit shipments uh, receipts or invoices and other details you see here it's showing us the revision or change order details as well okay so these are the change order details and these are the original documents so this is the end-to-end -end process in which one can create a purchase order get it approved like in a serial approval fashion 
you can also implement parallel approvals and then once it has been approved then you can modify it and then I've shown you how you can uh, get a modified PO reapproved. I've also shown you how you can reassign a purchase order to someone else by transactional controls as a procurement administrator.